Disciple! It's Kubrick, and today I'm doing an in-depth review of the Disciple compilation, Alliance 6, and let's roll the intro, please. Hello, please excuse me. Alright guys, I know I'm a bit late with this review, but I've had a lot of stuff going on this week, so I apologize. But moving forward, we've got a lot of music to cover today. 20 songs, in fact, which was a lot more than I was expecting on this compilation. But I put a lot of work into editing this long-ass video, so please leave a like and share this video with your friends if you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, enough mucking around. Let's begin with that mega collab. <laughs> First off, the vocals were really fun. I love the references as always. The first drop started out pretty basic in my opinion. Um, you know, with all these people collabing, I kind of expected more, especially based on the previous mega collab drops. I thought they were a lot more unique. They showed off everybody's different styles coming together a lot better in my opinion. This one just kind of had detuned phase one womps with a sustain, which we've heard like a thousand times at this point. So I was a little bit disappointed with the first drop. And then the only redeeming quality of it was pretty much the Fox Stevenson part at the end. That was probably my favorite part of the drop, but it actually just made me more sad because I wanted more Fox Stevenson in the drop. Moving on to the second drop, the second drop had some cooler sound design. It was a much more fun flow, but if I'm being honest, other than the fire sound design, it's a pretty basic tear out flow and yet another drop we've heard a thousand times by now. So I think overall it's a fun song and would be a bop live and the melodic content between the drops and the vocals were really fun and full of substance but the drops just felt a bit underwhelming for a mega collab and just not that much substance i was a bit disappointed but it was still fun and like just the fact it's a mega collab makes it really fun and a unique addition to the disciple alliance compilation albums moving on to viking rhythm enough said End of my review. Let's get out of here. But it's a really cool concept. I haven't heard anyone do before. And I think it was perfectly executed. Honestly, probably one of my favorite Samplifier tunes. I love the second drop switch up. I'm glad he made it a bit heavier and let it build on itself. And the breakdown after the second drop is such a fun melody and it's a really cool lead. I don't quite know what instrument it's supposed to mimic because I don't know Nordic folk music instruments or <laughs> whatever that's supposed to be but uh, it felt really in line with the theme and my only critique of the song is that i wish there was more than one drop because i wasn't paying attention to spotify so i was actually expecting a third drop after that breakdown but all around great song <laughs> So first off, really touching intro. Modestep really knows how to song write, but then again, we all knew this because it's Modestep. But all of the atmospheres and different elements used in the intro created a mood that just kind of hugs you. And then the transition into the buildup from the intro was flawless. Getting to the drop, I loved the use of the chords being layered with that emotional sustain bass. The layering was really do well done until the B part of the drop. Um, that new heavier lead that was introduced felt a bit weirdly mixed. Um, I could have been down with mode step just repeating the first half with maybe some different notes or something. But uh, yeah, that heavy lead that was introduced, it just felt like way too on top of and like forward in the mix compared to all of the other elements that had kind of blended together perfectly. Getting to the breakdown is where things got a bit disappointing for me. I really wanted to hear Modesta build on the melody in the second drop, but uh, you know, he ended up copy pasting. And you, you, you guys know, I'm not a fan of copy paste drops. And I feel specifically with this song, they really could have built on the emotion and triggered some serious cry banging. But that breakdown after the drop is phenomenal and the introduction of the violin in the end just freaking hit. So I guess Modestep redeemed themselves with the violin at the end, if we're being honest. Eliminate. 
So this starts out with some fun, wholesome synth wave, which I can always get behind. I love synth wave. I love the nostalgia it provides me. I will say the transition into the buildup felt a bit sudden, but the drop was really fun. So fuck it. I've listened to a bunch of Eliminate sets over the past year, so I've already heard this drop a bunch already, so it didn't have the greatest shock value for me personally, but I appreciate the fun sound design and how it was complemented by such an empty drop. Moving on to the second half of the song though, it was a bit repetitive and the second drop was a cool flip of the rhythm, but it didn't really keep me hooked. Overall, it was a bit of a mediocre release from Eliminate, but that could very well be due to the fact that I've heard the song so much already. So again, the shock value just didn't hit. And I think it's one of those songs that's kind of about the shock value. And the more you re-listen to it, the less intriguing it feels. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you relate. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. So speaking of Synthwave, Barely Alive is the king of Synthwave in the disciple arena of things. They really blew me out of the water with this nostalgic and so well produced synth pop intro. Ignore the cat crying in the background. God damn it, Booch, stop. Okay, so speaking of Synthwave, Barely Alive is the king of Synthwave in the Disciple arena of things. They really blew me out of the water with this nostalgic and so well-produced synth pop intro. It honestly makes Eliminate's take on Synthwave look a little bit like child's play, no cap. I love though that they basically build a whole song and then I'm almost out of nowhere, just flip the damn table, fuck you up with a heavy ass drop. I think this song is honestly the perfect synergy of synthwave and dubstep, and I am here for it. And my only criticism is the second drop. The second drop was a bit weird in parts and didn't flow as well as the first drop, but I love everything else about the song too much to even give a shit. Also, before we move to the next tune, can we just give Exo Eliza, whoever that is, some props for such spot on vocals? Like, hit that 80s throwback vibe so perfectly so starting things out i love the bit crush vocals those combined with the piano brought me back to 2013 era of pop for some reason and i don't know why but i love that moving on to the intro and the initial breakdown they were super enjoyable super uplifting and really had me wondering what we were going to get from the drop and boy was i surprised to be getting a future bass drop from 12 planet now about the future bass drop it felt really basic it was really basic and just a bit aged it would have been fine if it had been flipped into something crazy and though it was a cool effort and i did enjoy the fake out part of the rhythm drop the drop that hit felt a bit empty and if i mean if we're being honest i've just we've seen 12 planet do so much better the song overall didn't feel like a 12 planet tune to me, it felt more like a random 3000 follower SoundCloud artist tune. I don't know if that makes any sense as a comparison to you. It might be way too anecdotal. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, overall, it was just pretty disappointing coming from 12th Planet. And that's all I can say. And I do want to reiterate, this is all my subjective opinion. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, take any shots. I'm not an all-knowing god of music or anything like that, so take all of these opinions with a grain of salt. So we get that classic housey Oliver's sound, which is fun. It's always fun. The vocals do sound a bit pushed back in the mix, so it's actually a bit hard to understand them at certain points, but the way he builds tension into the breakdown was really fun and uplifting. And then the leads he used in the breakdown were really fun and gave me some like drum and bass vibes almost, like some delta heavy like just really energetic there's about to be a crazy drop type of vibes which i loved and just more building that tension i was not expecting that drop honestly probably partially because of the drum and bassy vibes in the buildup but it was a really awesome and welcome surprise the vocals really set the tone in a cool way and though it was a simple drop the atmosphere and energy in it really went off I was smiling and jumping. I was so into it. 
And then for a second, it did feel a little bit like Fox Stevenson, but then that B part of the drop, Oliver's gave us a really dope switch off and it felt classic, but refreshing. And I really fell in love with the drop. Now the breakdown, with all the delay on the vocals and all the risers was pure beauty. And I really wanna point out how much Oliver's has mastered atmosphere, energy, tension, and you see so many examples throughout the whole song. I also wanna say I really enjoyed the length of his bridge and the breakdowns. This felt more like a song rather than just a dubstep tune, if that makes sense. Even though the first drop was a bit of a copy paste into the second drop, because he put so much substance in between the drops and really rebuilt up tension a second time, it didn't really bother me. I really think there's a lot to learn from this song if you're a producer, and it's probably one of my favorite Oliver songs in a while. Amazing job, Oliver. Damn, loved it. I love Fox Stevenson so much that this might be a biased review of this one. So, forewarning, Fox is a master of composing, arrangement, sound design, and mixing. He is a really traditional engineer's approach to dubstep production, so his songs are always a refreshing change of pace from the status quo. That being said, you can really see him flexing his songwriting abilities in the intro of the song. Honestly, I'd be down for a VIP where he just extends the intro into like a fun pop song on its own, but getting into the drop, I was actually not a fan of the first drop. The sound design wasn't quite there for me. The drop overall felt too empty. And when, especially when contrasted with the intro, cause the intro was full of energy and full, like all the frequency range was full. And I, it was just getting me so excited for what was going on. The drop felt a bit underwhelming after that, but getting into the second drop, I was pleasantly surprised. It was a really fun rhythm and the weird like vocody chord arp leads were phenomenal. And then the bridge, the fucking bridge, dude. My God, so much beauty in that bridge. And then back to the second drop, I don't know why, but Fox Stevenson always especially kills the second drops in his songs. He does have like a pretty common arrangement template for a lot of his dubstep. And I don't know why, but it's always that second drop that just knocks me out of the park. Then unfortunately, usually the third drop, it's always the same as the first drop. And so in this case, I was just sad again because I just really don't enjoy the tonality of the leads and how thin they feel in that first drop and third drop. Moving on. Now let's be frank, guys. Who isn't excited for some new Virtual Riot? The Future Garage vibes in the beginning were amazing. I love Future Garage, if you haven't been able to tell yet. And Virtual Riot is a master of atmosphere. And the way he introduced the vocals felt really Skrillexy and fun and has those beautiful some kids vibes that's his alias if you don't know who that is the frequency shifted phasing buildup was super fun and then getting into the drop it was so pleasant it was so pleasant and it really brought me back to his 2015 melodic dubstep in such a good way but it also had that newer wave of like color based sound design added to it which made it super refreshing and a unique feeling drop now the breakdown with the panning vocals and insane sounding piano pads blew my mind the amount of texture and just production flexing was so fun and then he breaks it down again with just i don't even know what i was listening to but it made me so goddamn happy and gave me shivers and then he got into the drop the second drop and i felt frozen i just straight up froze in my seat and I, I felt like I was about to cry for a second. And then just don't, don't even get me started on the sound design and the flow and all the vocals and textures being layered. Wow. You can tell there was a lot of emotion and thought put into this song. And if I'm being honest, I, it kind of blew everything else on this whole entire album just out of the water. I didn't really, really, I didn't really want to listen to anything else after that because the second half of that song, 
hit me like Skrillex's music hits me. And that will probably go down as one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. I can't wait till shows come back so I can go see Virtual Riot and bawl my eyes out when he drops that fucking song, hopefully at the end of his set. And then me and all my friends will just hug each other and it'll be a beautiful moment. But God damn, I was not expecting Virtual Riot to drop such a beautiful song on this compilation album. <laughs> Okay, so I'm such a sleut for reggae dubstep. It's a beautiful formula, and Bandles killed it, if I'm being honest. It felt like a Bandles remake of Skrillex's Make It Burn Them, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I don't care. I don't really care. The first half of the drop was really fun, but the breakdown did feel a bit drawn out, and I did get bored for a second, but then Bandles brought it back with the second drop of the song, and their good old Bandles hybrid trap vibes, which I, I had a little deep dive the other day on just some of the old music I used to put in my sets all the time. And I played a lot of that old like 2016, 2015 Bandles hybrid trap and I missed it. So I was so happy to see them kind of throwing back to those vibes subtly with the second drop. Overall, it was a really fun song and I feel like Bandles did do enough to set it apart and not just feel like a Skrillex ripoff. So, uh, yeah. So, the intro of Dark Elixir really lived up to the name of the song. Very eerie, very mysterious. The drop, however, just wasn't me. It just wasn't for me. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, per se, and I'm sure I'd break my neck to it live, but I, I think I'm just kind of over that style of dubstep, to be honest. Now, getting to the second drop, things take a turn for the better. First off, it was a cool build-up and fake drop into it, and then to get to Dirty Phonics' heavy take on Tear Out made it a bit more fun. It didn't blow my mind or anything, but it was pretty lit, and I couldn't help but headbang. Oh shit, almost dropped my water. Getting into the second half of the song, it was really cool to hear Dirty Phonics flip the theme into some chill future garage. The leads really went well with that vibe, but looking back at the whole song overall, I feel that the first two drops were a bit too heavy and wild for the more calm and eerie theme that the song set in the beginning and in the breakdown. <laughs> I've never paid a lot of attention to Graphite in the past, so I was surprised to see him on this album. I guess I forgot he's a part of Disciple. I'm sorry, Graphite. But starting out with some twerky trap vibes was really fun. Definitely something that would go off in the club. And then getting into the drop was such a dope surprise. I love how the drop just continues to build on itself and it doesn't get too complex for the audience it would attract with the intro, if you know what I mean. Like this is a tune you could probably get away with playing in a bottle surface club, at least the first drop. The point is, it's a really digestible song and it just gets you dancing. And boy did I enjoy the breakdown. The space graphite put in before reintroducing the vocals and the drums, it was really fun. Getting into the final drop though, it didn't maintain that simplicity of the first two drops. It got a bit more tear outy and layered, which I kind of fucked with, but I was kind of over it by the time I got to it. Definitely a fun song though, and I'm looking forward to some more graphite. <laughs> So the intro on this one kept me guessing for a second. I wasn't expecting it, but the hip hoppy intro was really fun. The build up felt pretty basic to me, but really matched the Disciple vibe, especially with all the brass. Now getting to the drop, it was cool besides the cheesy vocals, but this is an issue I see e Craze running into a lot. It's felt like since the beginning of him popping off, he's just tried to emulate space laces. So when you try to emulate someone, and I'm not saying he intentionally tries to do this, but at least his music sounds like he's trying to emulate Space Laces. So when you, when you try to emulate someone, you get compared to the person you're emulating. Now getting compared to Space Laces is a pretty hard expectation to meet because Space Laces, I mean, it's Space Laces. So basically what ends up happening is e Craze just ends up sounding like a bootleg version of Space Laces, in my opinion. And I used to feel the same way about Samplifier as well, if I'm being honest, but I feel like Samplifier, for instance, has evolved his sound design enough recently to start setting himself apart. Like, he doesn't feel as much like ripping off space laces, he feels more like Samplifier now. But e Craze with this song, it feels like now he's trying to evolve more into that Disciple Britom sound, 
So now he just sounds like a bootleg Space Laces mixed with a bootleg Barely Alive. And I'm just, it makes me sad. Like th these are just my opinions and I'm not trying to throw any shade at e -Craze, but I just, I really hope e -Craze continues to evolve and find his own voice in dubstep like I saw Samplifier do. And yeah, that's my wish. All I can say is wow with this one. It was a classic phase one vibe, but with some wild freaking neuro basses mixed in. Also, a new twist on his drums and a beautiful, beautiful snare. I didn't think he could go even harder, but then we get to the second drop and though it was that classic phase one flow, there was something different and progressive about it that I just loved. And then getting into the breakdown and bridge, I absolutely love that he spent some time just showing off the neuro basses. That was really fun. And then the final drop wasn't really a new idea in the song, but it was definitely fun and definitely overall a fun new evolution of phase one sound. Oh, rhythm. I absolutely loved the theme of this tune. The Beatles got me into music in the first place. And now Paul is here getting me into rhythm. Very surprising. Can't believe he was able to get Paul McCartney to do the vocals on a rhythm song. Obviously, it's not actually Paul McCartney, guys. It's a joke. But unfortunately, though I love the theme so much, I wish the drop was a bit more interesting, especially because of how fun the theme of the song is. But it is also rhythm as fuck. So can I really complain about that? I do wish the sound design was a bit more trippy to honor the Beatles' love of psychedelics. But goddamn, that second pre-drop, hearing Paul McCartney say, drop it like it's hot, just made my day. <laughs> <sighs> I love chibs, but honestly, I just was not feeling this one. The intro and drop felt disconnected, and though I appreciate the experimentation with the flow and the rhythm of the drop leads, it just wasn't for me. Also, a lot of the sounds used in this tune kind of felt a bit too harsh. I found myself skipping past this one, unfortunately. <laughs> Not Alone was a really pleasant surprise and welcome change from Murda's usual content. It felt so gentle, dark, vibey, and definitely 4am smoke sesh vibes and felt a lot like Professor Chaos by Subtronics, which is a good thing. Also, I must say, these trippy resampled neuro basses were cool as fuck. Getting in the second drop, I really enjoyed the groovy switch up. Overall, I really hope Murda goes in this direction more often. I found myself enjoying this song, honestly, a lot more than his usual songs. Like, mad respect to Murda, he's OG rhythm man, but man, please make more of this shit. This was beautiful. I'm gonna stand up now. I don't know why, but I want to stand up. I think I just cracked my back somehow. What the fuck? Okay, so seeing this title already had me intrigued as to what kind of throwback I might be hearing. It had a really fun UK breaks type of vibe going on in the intro, and then it just went right into the drop, and boy was I vibing. It was a really fun new vibe that I wasn't expecting from Dodge and Fusky. I can't really remember the last time I've heard them make such a chill, like in comparison to their normal releases type of song. Um, the pitch bending moxie bass is always fun, no matter what it's put in. And so to hear it blended in so well with the breaks and the melodic elements of the song, it was just really fun. And uh, this was probably one of my favorite Dodge and Fusky songs in a while. And it was such a well put together package of a song. So I'm always excited to hear some new Myro. He's an OG and I can never get enough of that good old nostalgia. Going into it, you can immediately notice the difference in the mix down and master compared to the rest of the tracks. Now, while I can respect an artist not submitting to the freaking loudness war, uh, I think putting it next to all these clipped and brick walled out the ass <laughs> tracks is a little awkward feeling. But moving forward, because that's not super important, into the content of the actual song. Boy, did it check all my boxes. I mean, I love Rasta vocals and the slow gangster groove of the subs just really brings you back to the roots of dubstep. I really appreciate the history of this genre I love so much. And so this was a polished throwback to that. Myro really killed it. And I'm glad to see he's still active making bangers. 
I'm kneeling now. So the intro pads and the atmospheres Teravita layered with them really set the tone the title of the song gives off. The whole intro overall created a really cool world and almost felt like a movie trailer or something. Now, I must say, I have not been much of a fan of Teravita since I'd say about 2016, but man, I was not expecting this drop. I missed drum step so much, and the fact that they just kept it to those wild neuro basses and not much else made it so fun. The breaks in the second drop were fire, and overall this whole song felt in line with the nostalgia that Myro's tune provided. Both of their songs really give a nice nod to where this all came from, and the theme of Galaxy 16 really threw it back to like that old school gaming dubstep on YouTube that I personally used to love. And so overall this was a really fun surprise and a fun ending to an interesting journey of an album. So my final thoughts, there's quite a lot to digest in this Alliance compilation. There's quite a bunch of different vibes, but what would you expect with 20 plus artists on it? I enjoyed a pretty big portion of the songs and a couple really impressed me and surprised me in a fun way. There were a few letdowns, especially with it being the yearly Alliance compilation. Some of the artists kind of really let me down in terms of bringing their all to the compilation. But at the end of the day, I had a fun experience listening to all this new music and falling back in love with Disciple for a second. And that right there makes it a great compilation. I also appreciated all the nostalgia thrown in this album. It really gives you a warm feeling during a really cold feeling time. But with that, I'll go ahead and end this review. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this more in-depth, less reactive review. I really enjoy doing these, but I don't want to bore you guys. If you even made it this far, Make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this and head down to the description to stream Alliance 6 if you some reason haven't already. And as well, check out my brand new Discord server where I hang out with y'all, talk about music, art in general, life, try to help each other grow and just build a friendly community online together. Well guys, my name is Cubic. This was a fun journey and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm gonna go